What's up, my comic comrades? It's definitely no secret that Batman is by far my favorite superhero. I mean, have you seen my man cave? I am not obsessed. You're obsessed. But considering my completely normal love affair with The Dark Knight, you can imagine how shocked we were when we realized that we have never done a history of Batman Beyond. I mean, his creation in cartoon series was yet another huge part of my childhood, so I really have no idea how we managed to go so long without at least a single rant about this awesome and futuristic take on The Dark Knight. Regardless, you're definitely in for a treat today, my friends. And this glorious episode of Bat Goodness is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends mobile RPG game. Yes, I know, and it's as fun to play as it looks. In fact, we've been playing this game for months now, and it's become one of our favorite mobile games ever. And we're definitely not alone on that. It's got a near-perfect score on the Play Store for a reason. Raid Shadow Legends is a brand new and shockingly immersive collection RPG game. It's got a great fantasy storyline, impressive 3D graphics, giant boss fights, PvP battles in the arena, and a long list of champions to collect and go to battle with. I'm talking orcs, mystical dark elves, warrior knights, undead hordes, and a bunch more. You could also upgrade and customize your roster of champions champions with different weapons, power rings, amulets, and more. It will definitely remind you of the classic RPG and strategy games, but with amazing graphics, detail, and the added bonus that it's on your phone. To top it off, Raid is completely free to download and play. The popularity of this game is spreading crazy fast, and with the huge new update this month with new features, it's a great time for you to jump on. And be sure to look up and join our clan if there's still space, because squad goals. Just use our link in the description right now to download Raid for free, and when you do, you'll get a bonus 50,000 silver and a free epic champion as part of the new player program. But remember, you have to use our link or you won't get those extras. So get your game on and we'll see you there. But now let's talk about the main event, Batman Beyond. Batman Beyond debuted in 1999 and was created by comic and animation legends Bruce Timm, Alan Burnett, and Paul Dini. Or as I call them, the holy trinity of the DC Animated Universe, or the DCAU for short. They're the three most prominent creative minds when you're talking Batman the Animated Series, Superman the Animated Series, Mask of the Phantasm, Justice League, Justice League Unlimited, and that is literally just scratching the surface of their contributions to the DC animation world. But of course, the creation we're talking about of theirs today is Batman Beyond who, like most of their creations, first appeared as a cartoon series after the seminal and iconic Batman the Animated Series came to an end. And much like Harley Quinn and several other characters originally created for the DCAU, Batman Beyond became so popular amongst comic fans he eventually made his way into comics, getting several different series over the years, some of which were still based in the animation continuity and others with him becoming a main character in the DC Universe comic continuity. But now that you know a little bit about his real-world creation, let's talk about his fictional creation and origins. Batman Beyond's origin is given to us in the pilot episode of Batman Beyond, but also in his first comic book series, which is almost verbatim to the cartoon series as it's based in the DCAU continuity. However, it was modified to fit comic format, as well as the addition of a scene in Bruce's early years as Batman, where we see him use some sort of exoskeleton-like tech that greatly enhances the strength in his right arm. So much so, he's able to smash a forklift into pieces with a single right hook. The thugs he's stopping even say, with that arm thingy the bat's got, he's as strong as Superman. Imagine if he ever makes a whole suit out of that stuff. And now you know why that scene was added in the comic, to tell us how Bruce got the idea to make the Batman Beyond suit in the first place. It's a short edition, only being three pages long, but an awesome edition nonetheless. After this, the book follows the pilot episode nearly word for word and shot for shot which is what I'm here to talk about. We're first taken many years into the future where Bruce has developed a new high-tech bat suit that increases his strength and allows him to fly, among other things. He goes to an airplane hangar where criminals are keeping a wealthy woman tied up for a ransom of $5 million. So of course Batman tracks her down and showed up to save her. This obviously leads to a fight between him and the criminals. But remember, this is many years later, so Bruce is older now, and even with his enhanced bat suit, is having a hard time taking down the bad guys. To the point where he's collapsed to the floor, seemingly having a mild heart attack, and is getting beat with a massive wrench. No longer being able to defend himself, and in an act of desperation, he grabs a nearby gun that he sees on the floor and points it at the man who's beating him. The man runs off, but Bruce being disgusted that he had to use the one thing he swore not to in order to scare the criminal off and win the fight, hangs up his bat suit for the last time, retiring from his life of crime fighting and being the Batman, saying, never again. I know, pretty deep compelling stuff, and this was a kid's show. We then jump 20 years later where we are introduced to a kid named Terry McGinnis, 
who, fun fact, was voiced by Will Friedle, aka Eric, from Boy Meets World. Anyway, Terry was born in Gotham City on August 18th of 2023 to Warren and Mary McGinnis. Warren was a research scientist at Wayne Powers. As for Terry, he was one of those bad kids that still has a good heart. In addition to having a temper, he also always seems to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. One day, Terry finds himself on the run from the Joker's street gang after defending his girlfriend from them. As for the Joker's street gang, they're a gang paying homage to the now dead clown Prince of Crime. Anyway, on the run via a motorcycle, Terry soon finds himself cornered at the gate of Wayne Manor, where an old cane-carrying Bruce Wayne comes out saying, leave him alone. But they ignore him, so old man Bruce helps Terry defeat and chase off the gang. Unfortunately, Bruce is very, very old now, and the strain of the fight put too much stress on Bruce's already weak heart, so much so that he nearly collapses, and Terry had to help him back into his mansion. Terry even gets him his medication, after which Bruce immediately falls asleep being exhausted from the fight. So Terry puts the water down and goes to leave. But on his way out, he notices a bat stuck inside a grandfather clock. Uh-oh, what could that mean? Dun, dun, dun. While trying to free said bat, Terry accidentally triggers something that opens the secret door that is the grandfather clock, revealing the entrance to the bat cave. Entering the bat cave, he realizes that Bruce was Batman. Shortly after, Bruce wakes up and chases Terry out with his cane. Terry then returns home where he finds out from his mother that his father had been killed by the Joker's gang as revenge for earlier that day. Terry then finds a disc his dad hid in a picture frame of the two of them and brings it to Wayne Manor to ask Bruce to help him find out what it is. Bruce finds out the disc contains information on a biological weapon being made by Wayne Powers. Bruce tells them to go to Commissioner Barbara Gordon as he's not Batman anymore. Terry doesn't go to the cops and instead steals the newest bat suit where he soon overhears a conversation of Derek Powers saying that he killed Terry's father. Long story short, Terry in the bat suit ends up saving the day from Powers and his biological weapon. Bruce then realizes there is still a need for a Batman in Gotham and boom, makes Terry McGinnis the new Batman. But one more incredibly important thing you need to know about Terry's origin is that he is in fact a partial clone of Bruce Wayne something we learn in the Just League episode, Epilogue. Before Terry's conception, Amanda Waller had Terry's dad injected with a nanotech solution that rewrote his reproductive material into an exact copy of Bruce's. So when the child was born, it would be Bruce's half-clone. She called this the Batman Beyond Project. A few years after Terry was born, she hired the Phantasm to kill his parents in front of him, as she said the psychological trauma of this event would push him towards becoming Batman's successor. But the Phantasm abandons her hit just moments before as she realized that she was not able to completely tear an innocent child's life apart. She later argues with Waller that the murder of Terry's parents would defile the Batman legacy by breaking Batman's number one rule of never taking a life, marking the end of the Batman Beyond Project. But as fate would have it, Terry became Bruce's successor anyway. But now, my friends, it's time to talk about some story arcs and publication history. Like most popular characters, Batman Beyond has had several different comic book series over the years since his debut in the 1999 cartoon series. Batman Beyond's first ever comic book series was a six issue limited series that was released in March of 1999. It's also the same series that gives us his origin in comic form, which I just went through. The series is based within the DCAU continuity, as was his very first ongoing series, which followed shortly after and lasted for 24 issues. This series is really cool and featured some awesome stories like Terry teaming up with Etrigan the Demon for a Halloween themed issue. It even had the futuristic version of the Justice League show up, the Justice League Unlimited, for a story arc. Another really cool story it featured was one with Commissioner Barbara Gordon dealing with hallucinations from the Scarecrow. I'm actually a massive fan of all the comic books that live within the DC Animated Universe continuity, like the Batman Adventures comic book, the Superman Adventures comic, and so on. Because, as all diehard DC fans know, the DCAU put out some of the best stories and character development for DC characters. They even did comic book adaptations of Batman Beyond Return of the Joker, released in 2001. One might say, it's dope AF. Anyway, following the end of his first ongoing series, Batman Beyond would make his first appearance in main DC Comics continuity with a cameo in Superman Batman 22. With that said, it's not Terry McGinnis in the suit. Funny enough, it's Tim Drake who would actually take on the Batman Beyond mantle years later in the 2015 title. But I'll talk about that in a bit. Terry McGinnis' Batman Beyond would first appear in DC Comics' main continuity in Countdown to Final Crisis, issue 21. It was just a cameo appearance, but nonetheless, it was Batman Beyond beating down on the Joker's gang to save a couple. Terry would make one last cameo appearance in Batman 700 before fully getting introduced in main DC Comics continuity with a six-issue limited series. Although some people might argue his first full appearance in the DCU is in Superman Batman Annual 4. Anyway, this six-issue series featured the popular story Hush Beyond. The series is about a new hush that has popped up in Neo-Gotham who is murdering people as villains tend to do. So the hunt for this mysterious new hush begins, 
But before we find out who this new hush is, Terry runs into Dick Grayson, who tells Dick about his falling out with Bruce and how he lost his eye. But I'm not going to get into that right now because I want to make that its own episode down the road. I think talking about Dick Grayson and Bruce Wayne's complicated history would make a great episode. With that said, by issue 4 of the series, we see that Hush Beyond is in fact an evil clone of Dick Grayson. I know what you're thinking, comics love their clones, and you wouldn't be wrong. By the end of the series, one of Bruce's bat wraiths spear Hush Beyond into a hole and they die in an explosion. If you're wondering what a bat wraith is, they're essentially robotic Batman Bruce created in the event Terry ever died or Bruce was forced to take the bat suit away from him. Also, I have to at least mention we get a Catwoman Beyond in the series and she has a pretty cool looking high tech outfit. But skipping some stuff here and there like the 2011 and 2012 series, because there's no way I can get into detail about absolutely everything, we have the 2015 through 2016 series. During the mess that was the Future's End event, Terry McGinnis had died and Tim Drake took on the mantle of Batman Beyond. Don't get me wrong, it was kind of cool to see Tim Drake as Batman Beyond, but Terry McGinnis will always be Batman Beyond to me. But as all diehard comic book fans know, things always get put back to their original status quo. And this was no exception, because when DC relaunched the Batman Beyond title with DC Rebirth, Terry McGinnis was Batman Beyond once again. The series is being written by the great Dan Jurgens, and I gotta say, it's been pretty entertaining thus far. Now even though that's the most current Batman Beyond title, I saved my favorite for last which is the Batman Beyond 2.0 comic written by Kyle Higgins. And let me just say it is absolutely fantastic. It continues and expands upon the continuity set within the DCAU. And lord is it good. There's some awesome reveals between Dick, Barbara, and Bruce, and the freaking Phantasm even shows up at one point. And let us not forget, we get Lord Batman Beyond. There's just so much fan service in this series, and I'll even go as far to say it's one of my favorite comic titles of all time. Yeah, I said it. I love it that much. But with that said, friends, powers and abilities. Let's do it. Terry McGinnis is an able street fighter, and with the training he has received from Bruce, he has become extremely proficient in hand-to-hand -hand combat. But not to the high levels of Bruce's other surrogate sons and former Robins, such as Tim Drake and Dick Grayson. Now, even though Terry is a partial clone of Bruce, his fighting style is much different from him, as he's less dependent on formal fighting styles that Bruce has used. He's also been willing to use dirty tricks if necessary, which has enabled him to beat enemies much stronger than him and with greater numbers. Terry has also been shown to be a good gymnast, and because of his father, he has a high intellect. He's also been trained to be a detective by Bruce, and possesses some talent that Bruce didn't have. And that's all without his Batsuit. The upgraded Batsuit he wears gives him the ability to fly with thrusters built into his boots and two retractable gliders under his arms. The Batsuit also increases his strength by 10 times and gives him increased agility, speed, and reflexes. The suit's lenses have night vision and the cowl has a personal communicator which allows Terry to keep in contact with Bruce. Bruce is literally his guy in the chair. He also has dispensable batarangs with a bunch of auxiliary functions, such as explosion batarangs, electric shock batarangs, energy net batarangs, and so on. In addition to all that, the suit is able to withstand extreme heat and cold, high voltages of electricity, water pressure, vibrations, radiation, as well as take hits from heavy hitters with little to no damage. But I think you guys get the point. Batman Beyond is freaking awesome. If you're looking for some Batman Beyond reading recommendations, which I'm sure you are, Check out Batman Beyond Hush Beyond, the first Batman Beyond series based off the animated series, Batman Beyond Industrial Revolution, the 1999 Batman Beyond 24 issue series, and for the love of God, please read Batman Beyond 2.0. You will not regret it. First up for the week of June 19th, we have Justice League issue 26. After being off planet for so long, the Justice League must try to pick up the pieces of their lives, but Lex Luthor has other plans. Here we have Spider-Man in the League of Realms issue 3. Spidey and the rest of his motley crew are fighting for their lives against Curse. Now we have Star Wars TIE Fighter issue 3. The traitors of the Rebel Alliance have made their presence known. Will the heroes of the Empire be able to salvage the mission and save the day? And at what cost? And finally, we have Batman issue 73, The Fall and the Fallen part 3. Is this the end of Gotham City? Bane's army of villains is taking over the city. And Batman's back is against the wall. And that's going to do it for another episode of Variant. But remember, our link for Raid Shadow Legends is in the description. Trust me, you will not regret it. It's a super fun game. But other than that, be sure to follow us on social media like our Twitter, our Facebook, and our Instagram. Links for those are also in the description. And if you like the channel, be sure to subscribe. I'll see you guys next time when I talk about all things comics.